Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamaza here, and this is going to be my 8.3 Affliction Warlock DPS guide for both Mythic Plus and Nylotha. In it, we're going to be covering Azerite traits, uh, DPS, talents, rotations, essences, corrupted gear, rotations, openers, and I'm sure a few other things along the way. Now, I do want to mention before we get too far into the guide, that this should indeed be the final video, 3 out of 3, for Affliction, Destruction, and Demonology, uh, guides that I've been making for Warlocks heading into 8.3 and Nylotha. So if you want to see the Destro and Demo guides, feel free to check the channel, they should have came out a few days ago. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. I'll also place a link to my Twitch somewhere below my camera here, where I stream 6-ish days a week, all of my guilds for Russian and things of the sort there, if you want to come by and hang out there as well. Alright, let's get right into the video. Now, when looking at talents for Affliction single target wise, in the 15 row here we have three options a Nightfall, Drain Soul, and Death Bolt. Now, early in 8.3 PTR, both Drain Soul and Nightfall's damage was buffed considerably, as well as I believe Nightfall's proc rate a tiny bit, um, while Death Bolt ha essentially was nerfed by 33% raw value damage wise. Initial sims that came out a few months ago pointed to Drain Soul and Nightfall actually being better choice than Death Bolt, but recent sims that have been optimized are still pointing at us using Death Bolt um, in most scenarios. Certain fights where you want execute, or there are a lot of ads present where you can like snipe shards, Drain Soul gains a lot of value, and I mean, hey, if it's a big execute fight like Mythic Fallen Avatar was, then it gains even more value. But the majority of the time, we're going to end up using Death Bolt here. In the 30 row, we have Writhe and Agony, Absolute Corruption, or Siphon Life. The two choices here, I guess this is more of a rating build, not necessarily just single target wise, are going to be Absolute Corruption and Siphon Life. There are certain places that you play Writhe and Agony at times, um, but they're pretty niche, and the majority of the time you're playing Absolute Corruption, a good bit of the time at least, on multi-target council-based fights or fights with a lot of ads present on them where you can maintain perma-corruption and essentially getting you more free GCDs to cast UAs, Shadow Bolts, things like that. Or if it's a single-target fight, you're taking Siphon Life as your default choice here in the 30 row. In the 45 row, we really have the option of either Burning Rush or Dark Pact. The majority of the time in raiding, I'll take Burning Rush. Having that extra movement speed to move out of abilities that are unpredictable or abilities that are predictable that are coming at a certain point in time is really valuable. Fights where there's a lot of infrequent but heavy damage coming in, similar to like Mythic Queen's Court, certain similar fights like that, Dark Pact is pretty useful seeing as how it's a pretty short CD and gives you a pretty large absorption shield. In the 60 row here, as far as rating goes, we have the option of Sow the Seeds, Phantom Singularity, or Vile Taint. And single target wise here, even when it comes to council based fights with two or three permanent targets that are spread out, Phantom Singularity is where you want to be. It is essentially the only, it is the only single target DPS gain in this row over Sow the Seeds and Vile Taint. 75 row, we have Dark Fury, Mortal Coil, or Demonic Circle. In rating, you can make great use of Demonic Circle on basically every single fight. It is pretty much the de facto choice in the 75 row as far as rating is concerned. 90 row, we have Shadows Embrace, Haunt, Grimoire of Sacrifice. Unfortunately, Grimoire of Sacrifice has seen better days. It's been pretty undertuned for, I guess, this entire expansion. I think most of Legion, too. I can't even remember what form it was in. Um, either way, the choice you want to make here, single target wise, is Haunt. Uh, it's a 15 second CD, a 1.3 second cast or so depending on your haste levels. Uh, it essentially increases your damage dealt on that target by 10%. This also includes damage based effects like Crucible of Flame, Breath of the Dying, uh, damage based trinkets, essences, things like that. It's really powerful and combining this with Unstable Affliction which also has a 10% damage modifier on it, it really amps up the damage we have from, from damage based trinkets, essences, everything along those lines. So it's really, really strong. You want to maintain as, as high of a haunt uptime on your main target as possible. And finally, in the 100 row, we have Soul Conduit, Creeping Death, and Dark Soul Misery. The choice you want to make here as far as rating goes is Dark Soul Misery. Now, when it comes to Dark Soul Misery usage, which is a 2-minute CD, compared to your Dark Lair, which is a 3-minute CD, as far as Affliction goes, barring being able to squeeze in like an extra set of 2-minute CDs, like your font if you're playing it still, or Dark Soul, you hold your Dark Soul for your Dark Lair, for your Condensed Life Force CD. You hold them all for one another, so essentially every three minutes you have an insane amount of burst as far as Affliction is concerned. A lot of that is single target damage, but at the same time, seeing as how Affliction works, even if it's a fight similar to like Mythic Unat, you can harvest a lot of surrounding, a lot of, there are a lot of adds on the fight. You can harvest a lot of resources from surrounding adds, whether it be ID stacks, additional shards, uh, higher rack and brilliance uptime, and then focus all of that, like that extra raw value into one target with your three minute CD cycles. And Dark Soul Misery is a very big part of that. Now, as far as talents go in Mythic Plus, there's not really a whole lot changing here, but there's more that changes compared to Demonology or Destruction, which the guides I put out previously. 
In the 15 row, we have the option of Nightfall, Drain Soul, or Death Bolt. Nightfall might seem like it's a really good choice in multi-target scenarios, Mythic Plus, things like that. But the unfortunate thing with Nightfall is that regardless of if you have one corruption rolling or 8,000 rolling, it will still have the same random proc rate per minute. It does not, it does not scale with multiple targets. Um, Death Bolt is a 30 second CD. It's pretty single target focused oriented. And outside of your main Dark Lair CD and things, you really just hit it on CD. Um, Drain Soul, however, as we mentioned, uh, it, its damage was buffed a good bit in 8.3 as well as Nightfall. And the fact that it was buffed to a worthwhile level means that this is a pretty solid chance when it, a choice when it comes to mythic plus it essentially allows you to seeing as how drain soul works it gives it's a channel ability it has periodic ticks space three three actual channel so instead of casting a shadow bolt mythic plus on a mob that's about to die and having it die either mid travel time or towards the end of your cast drain soul gets those periodic ticks in while also bringing the ability to shard snipe which is pretty important and impactful as far as affliction goes in mythic plus in the 30 row, we have Writhe and Agony, Absolute Corruption, or Siphon Life. The choice you typically make most of the time in Mythic Plus is Absolute Corruption here. It just makes maintaining your corruption, uh, your dots in general, on large pulls much, much easier. You typically open on a precast um, Seed of Corruption, pop it with a Haunt, and then you sort of essentially set it and forget it as far as your corruption goes. Writhe and Agony is sort of an option in a sense. Keep in mind you have to refresh your corruptions uh, on multiple targets with seed every few seconds, or every 10-ish seconds. Um, it's typically see sees most of its play when paired with multiple sudden onset Azerite traits, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But the majority of the time, if you're playing Affliction and Plus, the choice you make is Absolute Corruption. 45 row Demon Skin, Burning Rush, Dark Pact. It's still pretty much the same. Burning Rush or Dark Pact. Uh, Dark Pact is even more useful in higher keys. Um, Final Boss of Toldegore. First Boss of Temple of Sethrovis, where you want to have that short CD where you can have that big Absorb Shield on you every every other ability, typically if you stagger it. Burning Rush, extra mobility. But like I said, when you get into higher keys, it typically is worth having this extra CD here. 60 row, Sow the Seeds, Phantom Singularity, Vile Taint. So the seeds used to be awesome in Legion, but unfortunately it was nerfed uh, in multiple ways before BFA went live. The choice you typically make here is either Phantom Singularity or Vile Taint. While Vile Taint is technically a DPS taint, I believe at four or five targets, Phantom Singularity is a worthwhile single target DPS gain, which can be extended by your Dark Lair. Technically Vile Taint can too, um, but it's a worthwhile single target trait as well. So when it comes to plus, normally, while you can get more value on larger poles of Vile Taint, I'll make the choice of Phantom Singularity. 75 row, Dark Fury, Mortal Coil, Demonic Circle. The choice I typically make here is either Dark Fury or Mortal Coil. Um, having a reduced CD or on, on, like, on, Sh on Shadow Fury from Dark Fury is pretty impactful, um, as well as the 45 second CD here, pseudo mini heal on Mortal Coil can save you in tight spots, as well as sort of interrupt casts that aren't really interruptible. Um, certain mobs in Motherload, for example, Mortal Coil is pretty relevant there versus having to fear the mob. 90 row, we have Shadows Embrace, Haunt, Grimoire Sacrifice. Um, it is much easier to maintain Shadows Embrace, get the actual debuff up and maintain it with Drain Soul. However, the play here more so to me feels like Haunt in Mythic Plus. Um, the fact that your Haunt CD resets every time the mob dies, at least should, barring it bugging out, um, is impactful. It also deals a bit of impact damage when it reaches the mob, and it does technically grant you 10% bonus damage versus 9 with Shadows Embrace. Unfortunately, Grimoire Sacrifice is undertuned at this point. In the 100 row, we have Soul Conduit, Creeping Death, and Dark Soul Misery. You do, at times, see people playing Creeping Death over Dark Soul Misery. I prefer playing Dark Soul Misery. I think the vast majority of the player base does too. Um, there are mo there are times you pair it with your Dark Lair and Plus. There are times you also don't pair it with your Dark Lair and Plus, depending on what you're doing. But having your Dark Soul CD to pair with your Dark Lair on bosses in Mythic Plus or single target pulls, whether it's a mini boss, something like that, is still really strong, really impactful, and really truly just amps, like ramps and amps your damage up so much more when compared with your Dark Lair versus Creeping Death. When looking at Affliction in 8.3 and Nilotha, not a whole lot is really changing Azerite trait-wise. Racking Brilliance is an amazing all-around trait that you should certainly look to acquire if possible. It is strong in virtually every scenario, and the massive intellect buff that it brings, especially when stacked, is extremely strong. Cascading Calamity is our strongest overall single target trait outside of Racking Brilliance, and only gains more value with 2 and 3 stacks. The haste buff that it grants lasts 15 seconds, which is basically the duration of two full individually spaced UA cycles, so it's very easy to maintain as a whole. 
Inevitable Demise is a strong single target trait that also brings with it a lot of self healing, which is often underestimated in a progression setting. ID also gains a tremendous amount of value in two or more target scenarios where you can keep agony rolling on each target for a prolonged period of time. It does still cap at 50 stacks and no longer generates actual stacks while channeling drain life, but it's still a really strong option in multi-target scenarios. Sudden Onset is a trait that primarily sees play in Mythic Plus when paired with Wrath and Agony or on niche raid encounters. It increases the damage of your Agony in the amount of stacks it starts with, at which, while impactful, does not affect shard generation or beat out other traits like Racking, Cascading, or ID single target wise. Heart of Darkness is the new 8.3 Nilotha as a red trait, and is a pretty strong choice damage wise as well, as it directly increases all of your secondary stats by a certain amount depending on eye level, as long as you have 25 or more corruption active. Now I do want to note here that this trait does not increase its secondary stat contribution further at higher corruption levels. As far as essences go for Affliction in 8.3, Condensed Life Force will still be our go-to essence for single target raid encounters as a major due to how strong it is still in conjunction with other CDs, even with the 8.3 nerfs. Minor essence wise you typically see focusing Iris and Crucible Flame here as our minor options of choice. When there are multiple targets or adds present however, Conflict and Strife gains a lot of value as far as minor essences are concerned, and seeing as how we're getting another minor slot in 8.3, it's certainly worth keeping in mind. To a similar extent, Breath of the Dying is a new essence in 8.3, and its minor half damage contribution is very powerful, nearly rivaling Crucible Flame. Once you enter Execute range, Breath damage truly skyrockets to the point where it leaves Crucible behind. It's also important to keep in mind that both Crucible and Breath of the Dying are damage based effects which are directly affected by Haunt slash UA damage modifiers which we spoke about earlier. In Mythic Plus or stacked AoE based situations, Affliction will typically look to play Focusing Iris with a similar Minor Essence build. Seeing as how Aft does not benefit as much as Demo or Destro from Lucid Dreams and to the same extent VOP most of the time, we're a bit more limited in our minor choices as far as Plus goes, normally opting for a mix of the ones shown here. Affliction single target opener with rank 3 condensed life force is actually pretty similar to how it was before. You want to precast Haunt right into Agony, Corruption, Siphon Life, and then Phantom Singularity. After that, pop your condensed life force CD into Dark Soul to not waste the GCD with Dark Soul active, and go right into dumping all of your unstable afflictions. After that, simply pop your Dark Lair cooldown right into a Death Bolt. If you have a Cyclotronic Blast or damage based trinket that's on use, now is a good time to use that. Just make sure that your Haunt does not fall. Outside of that, be sure to maintain your haunt in 3 dots while also trying to maintain as high of an uptime on unstable affliction as possible due to the 10% bonus damage it brings while active. Both haunt and unstable affliction are interesting spells in themselves as they bring actual damage modifiers with them. This is also applied to spells and abilities outside our normal warlock toolkit such as on use damage trinkets which make them even more powerful for us as a whole which is why it's important to have them active if possible when using such effects such as the cyclotronic blast trinket or dumping large id stacks as mentioned you want to save your two minute dark soul cooldown for your three minute dark lair and clf cooldowns due to how strong they are with one another you want to start pulling five shards roughly 25 seconds before your dark lair comes off cd so that you have five unstable afflictions to cast into your dark lair cd it's also important for your Death Bolt to be off CD at this time as well, so you can launch it right after you pop your Dark Lair. Death Bolts outside of your CD should mostly be cast on CD, as long as you have your main 3 dots rolling and typically you'll have one UA rolling as well. It's not worth dumping multiple UAs before each Death Bolt, so don't worry about saving resources for each one. When looking at a typical trash opener in Mythic Plus playing Absolute Corruption, you want to start by casting a Seed of Corruption into Haunt to pop the Seed, Use your Dark Soul cooldown and begin applying Agony to all the mobs. After that, swap back to your Haunt target and cast Phantom Singularity, followed by dumping your remaining shards either into one mob if it's a priority mob or multiples if it's not a priority by casting Unstable Affliction. Also keep in mind that if you're playing the Cascading Calamity as I trade here, you'll want to get that rolling here as well. You then pop your Dark Lair and Death Bolt onto the mob with Haunt active. If you're running Focusing Iris as your Major, feel free to pop it here as well. Outside of that, you want to maintain your agonies and use generated shards for casting unstable afflictions while filling with Shadow Bolt cast or Drain Soul in 8.3 outside of that. When it comes to corruption in 8.3, certain damage based procs like Infinite Stars and Echoing Void are pretty overtuned at the moment, so I excluded them from this sim. My hope is that these traits are nerfed a bit before the opening of Nilotha and can be brought back in line with the other corruption traits. 
The sims that I'm about to show you were run using my own profile from 8.2, so raw DPS wise, they don't reflect my lethal numbers, but are still useful to see where most corruption based effects lie. Without further ado, here are the sims I have for stat based corruption effects in 8.3. Both Honed Mind and Racing Pulse are very close to one another in Sims, which makes sense seeing as how they affect Affliction as a whole. You can see a bit further down the different variations of Haste and Mastery, as well as Crit and technically Versatility. Certain traits do gain a bit more value than others when stacked or paired with specific gear sets like Severe, but that maximization and optimization will most likely come much further down the line. I will most likely release another video in the next few weeks once tuning is mostly done, covering Corrupted Effects in what I hope will be their final form. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this video gave you all a better look and understanding as to how Affliction will be in 8.3 and Nilotha. Even though this raid tier has really been hyped up as a Destro raid, Afsto brings a lot to the table and benefits from having multiple Azerite traits that are universally a strong choice compared to Destruction's semi-limited cleave based Azerite traits. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you're interested in any week ORS or add-ons you've seen here, feel free to swing by my Twitch where they're all available for you, and if you want to see more WoW content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Once again, thanks for all the support guys, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.